Hey guys, welcome back to part two of my equipment rundown for ocean photography. Uh, so part one, I uh, talked all about the gear that I use and you can check that out, clicking up here somewhere. So for part two, I put a shout out on my Instagram uh, if anyone had any questions related to ocean photography and the equipment that I use. So I'm just gonna run through those now. We've got how to keep the port clean and drip free when shooting, still haven't mastered it, flat port. So flat port's what we call a dry port. So there's a design that you have no water on them or you want all the water to sheet off otherwise if you've got any water on there either they're going to show up as droplets or if you've got like a layer of water on there it's going to be hard to focus through and you'll probably miss, miss fire or it's going to give like this weird warp to your images so first thing you want to work out is if your port's made out of acrylic or glass so most of the surf brand housings are made out of acrylic um, the sea frogs ones are all made out of glass so acrylic's going to be more likely to scratch and then also i feel like water sheets off a little bit faster off glass so i prefer glass when i used to have the surf brand housings i actually used to get the front elements knocked out and then would get some glass cut to size and then we'd silicon it in when i say we i mean my friend coxie because he's a guru and he'd do it um not me so for the glass ports that are in sea frogs what i use is the stuff here which is rain -X. so this is a product that uh, you can get from service stations and it's been developed specifically to sheet water off car windscreens so i find it works really well for using on water housings as well uh, i have heard someone say that possibly might damage o-rings so I just use it pretty sparingly and kind of like use it in the center and keep it away from the edges maybe um, i've never had any issues with o-rings so maybe fake news who knows so generally the rain x will sort of keep it sheeting off for quite some time um, but after a while, if water starts to build up on it again, uh, what I usually do is just reach behind the ear here. You'll have like a little bit of natural body grease, then just sort of rub that on the port, rub it with your hand like that, and then the water will just start sheeting off it straight away. So with acrylic ports, the most popular solution I know of is using candle wax. So what you want to do is you just rub it on in like sort of a crisscross pattern and then just buff it off with like a soft cloth. Uh, and then what you're doing is you're basically rubbing it on and then you're removing 99% of it and just that 1% is going to fill in like any little gaps or scratches or anything like that and the water's just going to sheet off a lot quicker. I actually used to use turtle wax, similar sort of theory, uh, it worked pretty well also. And then if you, during your session you're starting to get droplets then again you can just reach behind the ear, rub it on, smooth it with the palm and then you should be good to go again. I know a few guys that use squeegees so you just cut a squeegee to the size of your port. Um, tie it onto your wrist and then between waves you can just sort of like give it a quick squeegee and then you should be good to go. Alright, how do you pack your housings when you travel? Uh, I used to have like a full pelican case that would have been cut perfectly to fit everything but I just found it was really bulky. Um, I'd have my luggage and then i have a pelican case then i have a backpack it was just sort of too much stuff so nowadays all I do is just take the port off, uh, wrap this up a little bit of bubble wrap throw it in like a fabric shopping bag and then just chuck it in my bag like amongst my clothes one thing you don't want to do is have it all sealed up with the port on um, because the pressure when you're flying can do damage to like can blow out seals or whatever so for this one if I wanted to have everything together um, I would just undo that little valve on the bottom um, and then to be good to go. How to focus, autofocus or manual focus? I always shoot in autofocus except I'm shooting fisheye. Uh, fisheye is the one time I shoot manual just because with the fish eye if you shoot like a highish aperture pretty much everything in your picture is going to be in focus so there's no reason to have to shoot autofocus but for anything else you're going to get the best results shooting autofocus. Uh, the question you really like the sea frogs housings do you see any downsides of the housing? I guess the downside is they're probably not going to be as indestructible as a one of the surf housing. I've seen a guy drive his truck over top of his surf housing um, and then it still be fine so I Probably wouldn't be that confident in driving my truck over this housing, but like in real life, I'm not in the practice of driving trucks over my housing. I'm only really using it shooting in the ocean, so it's all good. It's funny because the same housing brand where the guy drove over with the truck and it was okay, I actually had that brand housing. And then one of the little C-clips inside the bottom broke and my whole housing filled up with water and I lost the A9. So yeah i mean being able to drive a truck over it didn't really help me out in that situation end of the day it doesn't really matter how strong your housing is your housing is only as strong as the weakest point on that housing and this pistol grip is kind of like a bit plasticky so i don't know if you got an absolute thrashing so if you're a clark or you have got the crap beat out of your shore break in wire maybe something might happen with that pistol grip but again that's not 
really me and it's probably not really 99% of other people that are using them. Can you use different lenses for the same housing? Yep, so I went through that before. So you've got different ports you can change out and use different lenses. You're not gonna be able to use all your lenses. Obviously if you've got big long lens longer than a 7300, you're not gonna be able to use that. Or if you've got big fat lenses like my anything that's over a 77 mm filter, you're probably not gonna be able to use that. But everything else you should be able to use fine in those housings. What are your control buttons on the housing and why? Um, well, everything. I use all the controls. I pretty much use all the functions of my camera. Uh, there's not really one function of the camera that I want to use that I can't use. So, uh, What kind of lens do you use? Prime or zoom? Uh, I use both. I used to only use primes. Uh, primes are going to be a little bit faster to focus and a little bit sharper. Uh, but then I like the versatility of zooms as well. So. Uh, yeah, depending on what I'm shooting, I'll use one or the other. Any secret tips on getting more in focus shots? Uh, yeah, I mean the main thing is if you're shooting with a flat port, make sure there's no water on it. That's going to be the main thing that's going to make your shots out of focus. Uh, so use those techniques we talked about earlier, get the water to sheet off. Um, I'll use like a spot focus, don't use wide focus, that's just going to grab the focus of anything that's in front of you. So. Just use, I use like a medium spot uh, and move that guy around is generally what I'll do. How do you convince yourself to take the camera and fins when it's pumping and not surf? Well, when it's really pumping, those are the days I wait for to shoot. So I'm pretty excited to get out there. So it's easy. How deep can you go into a water leaks in them? Uh, the cool thing about sea frogs is that from a dive background, so their housings are actually all rated to 60 meters. Uh, whereas most of like the big surf brand housing is generally only rated to around 10 meters. Hi mate, your workaround for not being able to use the front dial, changing shutter speed and aperture and manual. Uh, yep, yeah, pretty easy. You just, all you do is just use your custom functions, uh, set up your aperture for the back ring, set up your shutter speed for this top um, dial here and good to go. Uh, recommended camera for someone who's looking to get started. I really like the this RX series for something to start out with. Um, yeah, super versatile. RX100 Mark VI is, would be my pick. Uh, something like that's good or something in the A6000 series. I probably wouldn't go for the A6000 itself because it's pretty old and there's a few things that are limited about it but A6300 is really good or if you want to shoot video the A6500 is really good because it has a stabilized sensor. Do you use Mekon? Uh, well Mekon and Seafrogs are pretty much the same thing. Uh, I think that pretty much Seafrogs is just like a rebranded version of Mekon so kinda. Spill the beans on how to get the perfect panning wave exposure. Uh, there's not really any like magic number that will get you a perfect like slow shutter sort of pan it depends like on your different focal lengths um, also what the light's like um, how far away from the wave you are there's there's a lot of things to be taken into into account so the way that i have sort of worked out what i want to do is just by trying different things in different situations and then um, kind of working out you know what i like in that situation what i like in another situation and yeah, often I don't get it right, probably get about one out of a hundred of those photos good, so just keep trying. Any off-on issues on the A7R3 housing? I have had issues before if I put the camera in and the switch isn't set in the same position on the housing. So if the camera's on when you put it in, just make sure that the switch is on in the housing and then once that's right, then it'll lock in and be good to go. What is the most common lens you use in surf shoots? Oh, for me, it's definitely the 7200 F4. It's just super versatile and you get so much done with that lens. If you weren't shooting for Sony, what other brand would you look at? Mm, probably Fuji maybe because mirrorless is definitely the way of the future and Sony and Fuji have been uh, hammering away at mirrorless for quite some time. The only thing is with Fuji is they don't have a full frame in the mirrorless. They've only got like a crop sensor and then the medium format one, but you probably make do with the crop sensor. Tips for keeping water drops off dome ports. Do you use for shooting surfing? So with the dome port, you actually want to keep a layer of water on the port. It's the opposite of a flat port. So just by like spitting on it and licking is kind of like the standard standard way, like you get like a layer of saliva on there and the water will stick to the saliva. So generally a dome port, you're gonna be shooting pretty wide. So you've only got like a small window where your photo is gonna look good, generally where's the wave barrel past you. So uh, if you're shooting surfing, you just kind of wanna like have it underwater, wait, wait, wait a second before you wanna take the photo, you pull it up, most of the water sheets off, the layer stays on and then you fire your frames off and then you've got like a couple of seconds before it starts 
disappearing. Have you ever had a housing leak or any camera damage in the surf? I've only ever had one sea frogs housing leak, but that was due to my own user error. So what happened was I put, went to put a pistol grip on in a hurry. I took off the little plug here, put the pistol grip on, but I didn't realize that there was no O-ring on the pistol grip. And so a little bit of water leaked in through there. Um, I've had other brand housings leak, flooded. Uh, I lost the A9, uh, so that hurt. Um, I had insurance, but my insurance policy for water housing has got a $1,000 excess, so it cost me a thousand bucks. Dome ports, if, how, when, why. I don't use dome ports very often. I'll only use them if I'm shooting super wide, uh, like with the, either with the eight mil fisheye on the crop sensor A6000 series or the 12 to 24 mil at 12 mil um, on the A7 series. Um, and usually it'll just be if I want to do like a split shot above or below, or if I'm doing some stuff underwater and I don't want too much distance between me and my subject. Uh, preferred housing for videos. Uh, these sea frog housings are great for video because they have so many buttons that you can access all the functions of your camera so you're not really limited to, you know, it's easy to swap back from video to photos and video to photos. So uh, from my experience, they've been great, um, but I haven't had a lot of experience shooting video with other brand housings. Did Carol Baskin kill her husband? That was a great question. I think she probably didn't do it. I think it was actually her creepy new husband with the glasses. I mean, he, he looks like a serial killer for sure. How do you rate Sea Frogs housings compared to other top housing brands? Uh, personally, for my shooting style, the Sea Frogs housings work really well. Uh, I found the surf company housings to be a little bit frustrating to use as the controls they had were quite limited. And I like to get quite creative when I shoot and change everything up. And I'm, um, I like to be able to mess with the controls as much as possible. So. Yeah, for me personally, I prefer the sea frogs. Is it essential to use a dome port while shooting with a fisheye? Yes, definitely. Because if you are using a flat port and you're shooting with a fisheye, the port will be around like that. And the fisheye is so wide that all you're going to see is the edge of the port. Uh, so yeah, dome port for sure. I'd love to know how you plan your shoots. Do you go out with the idea in mind and set up your equipment for that purpose? Or is it a bit of a free for all? I'd also like to know how adjustable the sea frogs is with changing settings. Thanks, mate. Uh, yeah, I often have a plan or I'll, if I'm going out at sunrise, I'll have something I want something in mind I want to shoot or if I'm, if there's certain sort of waves, I'll like look and see what focal length is going to be best for me in those waves. Uh, am I going to want to shoot a little bit further away from the wave if it's kind of like a bit scary or am I going to want to shoot fisheye if I want to shoot out of the barrel or, so yeah, it kind of depends on assess the conditions and just roll with what's going to be best for that. What are you mainly shooting with the 90mm macro and should I get a telephoto lens for my A7R3 or an ARX100 Mark 7 with a salted line housing instead? Uh, with the macro, I'm shooting just regular sort of wave stuff, regular sort of ocean stuff like you would with any other lens around that focal length, but I'm also shooting like ocean details, um, which are really fun to shoot. Uh, super close up stuff uh, can look really interesting. Uh, so it kind of has, it's cool because you can use it in two different ways. Um, should you get a tally lens? It kind of depends if you want to, if you've got an A7R3 and you're thinking that you might want to sell prints of the images that you're making, I'd probably get a tally lens for the A7R3 because you've got like a lot more information on that sensor and so it's going to work a lot better if you're making bigger prints. If you're just kind of shooting for fun, just yourself or whatever, or Instagram or anything like that, then you could, take, you could use the RX. What's the longest focal length you shoot underwater? Always 12 to 24 with a dome port or do you use longer focal lengths and a flat port? Uh, you generally, I'd use the 12 to 24 because the wider your lens is, the clearer your image is going to look because there's going to be less distance between you and your subject. Uh, there's some things I shot with, um, I shot some sharks in Hawaii and I shot at 24 instead of 12 because I was kind of scared and I didn't really want to go too close to them. Um, I've shot a little bit with like 55mm underwater shoot low aperture can look quite cool. You get uh, like interesting fall off like if you're just below the surface of the water can look cool. You can get like bokeh from bubbles and that kind of stuff. So mainly for me just the 12 to 24 mil at 12 mil unless I'm scared. Uh, would love to hear more about your positioning in the water. Um, 
and this is control and error and mostly comes from messing up and being in the wrong position and then adjusting from there. Uh, I just, I guess it's just the more you shoot, the more you kind of get comfortable and knowing where you need to be at the right time and anticipating what the wave's going to do. Why did you choose Sony over other brands? I'm a bit of a tech nerd and I love like researching all that information and what's new coming on. I could see mirrorless was coming in. I could see it's going to have its advantages and pretty much saw early on it was going to be the end of DSLR um, and it was going to replace that market. So. Sony's the mirrorless leader and I could see that they, what they were doing was pretty exciting. So in 2015 I bought an A6000, sort of just as a travel cam. Um, I also was shooting Canon at the time, I had a 5D Mark III and a 7D Mark II. Um, but yeah, I, s I soon saw that the A6000 could do pretty much everything that those cameras could do and more. And then as the technology advanced, it wouldn't take me long to swap full over. And, Golden. I'd love to get a hold of the housing for my RX100 Mark III. Yeah, your, your camera will fit in this um, salted line housing. So they actually make a few different housings for the RX ones, but this one has the removable ports and the pistol grip and stuff like that. So that would be the one to go for, I reckon. How do you manage focus? Uh, I use AFC, so continuous autofocus. So when you're holding the shutter button half down, it's continuously focusing on whatever's in your um, focal point and I use the medium flexible spot. Generally have it in the middle or lower middle uh, and then just make sure that any, any sort of like high contrast the area of what I'm shooting is in that spot. So if it's the wave, it's like the lip of the wave where it's changing from like dark to light, something like that. What are your go-to flippers? Mine are about to disintegrate. Uh, so flippers, yeah, I use either the fins are, are good, they're nice, or the Hydro Tech 2s. There's a, my two favorite ones, uh, so either of those are good. Which lenses you recommend for surfing? What free diving level is the standard for this? If you have not free diving experience, how can you develop? Uh, I'm definitely no free diver, so bit out of my depth there. The housings can go to 60 meters, but I don't think that I could go to 60 meters somehow. For surfing, kind of depends on what body you're using, but I like the, the 55 mil um, 1.8 is like a nice, Bubble length either on the crop sensor or full frame either or I reckon that's a good go-to. Do you use candle wax on your flat ports? Are you simply using saliva on the surface and dunking the housing just before you take a photo? No, I don't use candle wax but if you've got an acrylic port which most people will uh, then yeah you can use candle wax. If you've got a glass port like I do then Rainix is good. Uh, definitely do not lick and dunk a flat port because that's just going to encourage it to have a layer of water on it that's only sort of thing you'd use if you're using a dome port so uh, whatever you're using on a flat port don't lick and dunk. What's your favorite wave to shoot? Oh there's a really slabby wave uh, it's a long way from my house but I love it there so it's probably my favorite wave to shoot. It always has interesting wave shapes and like the way the light hits it in the morning is insane. Notice two of the housings don't have pistol grips is this for any particular reason? Uh, yeah so a lot, of the, a lot of the time I'm shooting like longer lens um, so I'll just hold it like you would hold your camera, one hand like that, one hand like that, and shoot. You can shoot that way with a pistol grip as well, uh, with the two-stage trigger, because you can focus like that as well, but um, yeah, just out of habit, that's kind of how I shoot with those ones. Um, sometimes, if, I, if I'm shooting like with a fisheye, I'll put the um, pistol grip on, because it's way more comfortable to hold it with a fisheye with a pistol grip, because uh, you can't really hold on to the port at all. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the reason. Just don't really need it for longer lens shooting, so don't don't bother. Simply, how does it all work with zooms and primes? Um, well, you can use the same port for some zooms, some primes. Uh, primes are easy. Put it in. That's it. You're stuck with zooms. Are sweet. You just put a uh, little zoom control like this in, and then use the zoom control on the side of the housing to use the different focal lengths in that zoom. Is it worth getting a housing for a Fujifilm X100F? I think that's like a fixed lens uh, camera. So let's just have a quick look. 23mm F2. I don't know if that's 23mm on a crop sensor or 23mm equivalent. And that's kind of an odd focal length. Uh, not really one that I would shoot personally, but if you have that camera and you bought that camera because it's that focal length, obviously it's something you enjoy, so 
I'm sure it could translate over to being in the water, but if you want something a bit more versatile, then you might be able to get something that's got like interchangeable lenses or a zoom or whatever. All right, that's the end of the question. So thanks for tuning in. If you've got any other questions yourself that I haven't answered, maybe just hit me up in the comments and I'll do best to answer those for you. So if you learned something today and you're interested in tuning in for some more videos like this, or maybe you just want to hear my soothing Kiwi monotone accent one more time, feel free to subscribe. I'll see you next time.